If you don't mind, do as I request. Put your hand out in front of you and make a circle with your index finger and your thumb, like this. Place it out to your side and then simply place it on your chin. I ask that you place it on your chin. <laughs> what this proves, thank you, and for those, th those that did it, because I saw a few, I saw one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why did I do that? Because the visual almost always trumps every other form of communication. Why? Stuff. What I have learned is that when we're coming up with infographics, there's two pieces of the puzzle. There's concepting and then there's rendering. Concepting is visualizing what we're going to communicate and rendering is making it so that other people can see it. So rendering is typically happening on the computer or another tool that helps us render the graphics. When we're creating an infographic, we put those things together. Awesome, awesome stuff comes out. Number one. Again, science says when we communicate with visuals and text, we communicate about 100 times faster. Whoops, we, I, I gotta stay on the right, right side of the camera. She's gonna say, dude, if I don't, so I'm gonna stay on this side. 100 times faster. If you don't believe me, here's an example. If you said, hey, Mike, I sound a bit like Keanu Reeves. Hey, dude. <laughs> you say, hey, Mike, what's a circle? And I said, well, that's a curved line with every point equidistant to the center. Do you know what a circle is? Maybe, maybe not. What if I said this is a circle? More likely to communicate, communicate more efficiently, more effectively. Our learners, do you think our learners are completely focused 100% of the time on our content? No! They are just like us in some ways. For example, they are tired. They're hungry. They're thinking, Dad will let the dog out. Is it going to pee on the carpet? Is my daughter going to get her third nose ring? They're not thinking, boy, oh boy, I can't wait to learn this stuff. I'm going to share with you some best practices, tips, tricks, and secrets on how to make sure they're always, always paying attention. And I'm using it today. If you're not engaged, if you're not learning, this stuff doesn't work. Ignore everything I say. If you're engaged and you're learning, it kind of works. Right now, in this room, we are going to find out for sure whether we actually improve learning with an experiment. A live experiment. This is how you tie a four in hand knot tie. This is how you do it. According to the interwebs, this is how you do it. And uh, by the way, when you're over 40, or for me, since I'm over 40, everything that's technological must have the in front of it. So forgive me, it's the Google, the Bing. It's how I have to roll now. So we have the tie. So when I type into the Google and the Bing and I say, okay, how do you tie a four in hand knot tie? The number one answer, the number one answer is this. Oh. Number one answer. So that means it's written by a professional author. It is what most people on the interwebs find to be the most helpful textual description of tying this particular knot. So I ask you, what do you think? 